Hello, this is the Southern Maryland Beekeeper, and this is my quick little video on my first swarm capture on May 15th, 2010. I thought I'd put together a little slideshow video for the folks that follow my antics and beekeeping. So what happened was I was at work on a Friday and uh, struck up a conversation with a co-worker, and he said, you know, I, would, I went over to the McDonald's here close to work, just grabbed breakfast, and he walked over, and he uh, looked up in a tree and saw a brown mass of uh, movement and he couldn't really figure out what it was so he said you know let me walk over and take a closer look at that so he gets 25 feet away or so and he realizes there are bees well then he takes off because he didn't you know most people don't know about honeybees anyway he uh, comes back to work and since we struck up that conversation he just mentioned it the first thing I thought was a swarm of honeybees let me go over and check that out so I drive over at lunchtime and this is what I see I didn't go and get the swarm until early the next morning. That's actually when this picture was taken. This is about, oh, I was probably 20 feet away from the tree, and I had zoomed just a little bit. So you could uh, kind of get an idea of how big the tree was and where the swarm was. Here's a little bit closer of a zoom, and uh, you can see how gnarled and deep that tree bark is, and I had no idea how in the world I was going to going to get these bees off this tree and the first thing I thought about was my uh, friend Kirk Anderson Kirk Obio from the Backwards Beekeepers I know he does a lot of uh, trap outs and swarm captures and out in Los Angeles and I uh, had happened to have his telephone number and my and my cell phone so I gave him a ring and said hey you know Kirk what do I do and he suggested that I gather up the materials I need go out and get them so he gave me some tips so here's a, a real close-up of the swarm as I'm on the tree. Here's a much closer, tighter shot. This one I'm up on the ladder, actually, holding the camera up, framing as many of the bees as I could. Here's a shot from a little farther back so you can get the true perspective of just how far off the ground they are and how big this tree is. And for perspective, here's the shot with the ladder. Now this particular step ladder was not the accordion fold-out style. This was just a single ladder that you slap against the side of the tree. That thing is eight feet tall. So you can kind of judge. That thing's about 15 feet off the ground. No safety wires, no harnesses, no nothing. No soft mattress to fall on. I mean, this was really precarious, and that step ladder was against the tree, So I, and I had to stand on the very top of it and still work over my head. It was uh, pretty hairy. I had to hold on with my left hand and do pretty much do everything with my right hand. And to make matters a little bit worse, even though you can't really tell in this picture, the wind was blowing that day. Here's another picture from the side angle so you can get another view. And you, if you look close, you can see my sugar water spray bottle on top of the ladder. That was one of the tips that Kirk told me to do was, uh, you know, initially go up and spray them down with a light sugar sugar syrup wait a couple minutes, five, five or ten minutes, spray them again, do that two or three or four times. And uh, I think I did it three or four times, actually. And I would take a break and, you know, sit out on the picnic table, wait a few minutes. I think I actually went inside the McDonald's and got me a coffee. This was really early in the morning. And here's uh, another picture of the materials that I used. Pretty much that's it, except for my uh, my bee suit. That's and a bee brush, actually, that I had in my pocket. So just a spray bottle of water, some duct tape, and a box with some holes punched in it. Here's another picture of my materials. My bee gloves and the, and the brush are actually in this picture. And I think this is the last one I take before I actually climb up the tree. Yep. So here's the here's my... And it took me a couple tries, actually, to get the box taped around this tree. I mean, that was just... Like I said, I was hanging on with one hand. The wind was blowing, so the duct tape was twisting, and it was a real hassle to actually strap this box to the tree. What I ended up doing was tearing off strips of duct tape and taping them to my own torso, my chest. So once I got up the tree, I'd have a pre, pre-torn pre strip of duct tape to work with, and the gusts of wind were just making it miserable because uh, the tape would twist on itself. But I finally did get it to this point. Here's a little bit closer and so this is actually the last picture I take before I collect the swarm. So at this point, I put the camera away, climb the ladder. Uh, I think I sprayed them down with sugar syrup one more time. And I held onto that branch and um, took the bee brush and swept the bees down in. 
just as fast as I could. It took probably eight or ten strokes of the brush to get the majority of the cluster down into the box. A lot of the bees took to the air, but the majority of the cluster got inside of the box. And I didn't wait around. I just immediately got down out of the tree, taped up the box, and took off. So this next picture is uh, my little cart there and my materials. And this is my portion of my yard here. And this is a second hive stand. I've got some hives in another area of the yard. But this is a little kind of foresty type area that gets direct sunlight for a lot of the day. And it was just a nice little spot that I chose. Here's another view. And I had just built this particular hive stand just the, the day before actually so I was really amazed you know like I said that my co-worker said here's a swarm <laughs> on a tree yeah I had no no plans for hives that quickly on this stand but here we go so here uh, if you look at this next picture you can see off to the left you can see the the box with the swarm still in it sugar water spray just to the right of the sprayer is the cypress wood hive top feeder it holds about a two gallons of sugar syrup to the right of that is the upside down telescoping hive cover also made of cypress all all this hive wear is cypress wood then of course the next box is a six and five eighths inch medium super which i use throughout all my hives for a brood as well as a honey supering and that's a screen bottom board that's under it to the right of that is the second super with the two frames that i've pulled out of the first one i made I pulled those two frames out so I could dump the swarm in there. And then all the way to the right, obviously, is the inner cover. Here's uh, the picture right after I dumped the bees in and assembled the hive on top. You can already see some bees coming out of the front of the hive. And uh, I set the box down on the ground for the remainder of the bees. And here's a close, tight shot on the actual bees themselves. They're really dark. I suspect they're probably well they're they're feral they're definitely small cell bees this is a real really tight close-up so the bees look large but they're actually very very small in comparison to some of my other hives so i can tell they, they're almost identical in size to the regressed bees that i have in a different hive these are dark i suspect maybe some, maybe some carnelian in there i'm not really sure actually if anybody is watching this and they know shoot me a, an email Craig at SOMDBeekeeper.com. Here's another shot of the of the swarm on the landing board. One more shot with the box still on the ground. And finally, the last shot where I just propped the box up. And I think I actually, from this point, I turned the box a quarter turn to the right and bent that box flap down so they'd have a little ramp to walk from the box straight into the hive. And uh, after this one, I think I just left everything like that and went and cut the grass. I was gone for about an hour or two, and when I came back, this is what I saw. And that pretty much does it. It was a successful swarm capture, and I'm very, very happy with the performance of these, these bees. And uh, if they pan out, then I look forward to grafting and creating some queens and some uh, mating these with my stock to create my own line of healthy chemical treatment free bees if you enjoyed this little quick video then definitely come to my website somdbeekeeper.com where i have podcasts i interview authors scientists beekeepers from all walks of life a lot of fun people great information about how to keep your bees alive without chemicals i hope you enjoyed my little movie until next time take care